You know, sometimes it's nice to play a game that's not a horrible sack of crap. And boy, did I go from one extreme to the other. When you play a really good game and then go to a really horrible game, you really start to appreciate good games even more. Because remember, bad games exist to make the good games look better. And guys, I really wish I would have just gone ahead and played Jazz Jackrabbit 2 like I had originally planned. But instead, I played this. Now guys, when I record footage for a game, Game. Depending on what kind of game it is, I plan to complete it. But if it's something like a Commodore 64 game where I know I'm gonna be sick of it within five minutes, I only record five minutes of footage. And this game, I planned to complete it, but I couldn't take it anymore. But before I get into why this game pissed me off so much, maybe I should tell you what it is. Once upon a time, there was a game company. I think you know who they are. They're a little game company called Bethesda. Oh yeah. In 1990, Bethesda acquired the rights to make Terminator games. And make Terminator games they did. They made five of them. Here's the first one. I didn't play it, but it looks... Yeah. It's always weird to see a pre-Wolfenstein first-person game. It was the Wild West. There was no standard yet. It was pretty ambitious for its time. It's open world, has 3D graphics. And then they did Terminator 2029, which did away with the 3D graphics and instead did that thing where it's 2D drawings of an area and they put it together to kind of fake a 3D perspective. Yeah, it doesn't look very good either, but again, it looks pretty ambitious. You can enter buildings and explore and stuff like that. You can tell they had an idea. Fast forward to 95, they made Terminator Future Shock and its sequel, Skynet. Skynet gives Quake a run for the money as one of the best 3D shooters of the year. I don't know about that, Big Dan. That said, Future Shock and Skynet are considered the best of the Bethesda Terminator games. They've got full 3D environments, they've got buildings you can go in, they've got vehicles, lots of stuff you can do. This was a year after they made Elder Scrolls Arenas, and it gives you an idea of what they were about to make in the future. But the game we're gonna play is a game that I encountered years ago. You see, my laptop at the time wasn't able to play modern games, so I would go on the Abandonware sites and look for old DOS games to play. And one in particular caught my eye, Terminator Rampage. It looked very similar to Wolfenstein. In fact, it came a year after Wolfenstein. It actually came out the same month as Doom. It looked interesting, so I gave it a shot. Big fucking mistake. So the story goes, a Terminator called the Meta Node got sent back to literally 1984 to take over Cyberdyne and activate Skynet. And you get sent to the same time period to try to stop him before he does that. Unfortunately, when you get there, he's already taken over the place and activated all the robots and the robots killed everybody. So the object of the game is you have to find all the parts to put together a custom plasma rifle. Only then can you defeat the final boss, the Meta Node. So you have to search through every map finding the weapon parts. Okay, fair enough. It's a neat little twist on the genre. Now guys, remember when I said I know if I'm gonna be sick of a game within five minutes of playing it? With this game, I knew it was gonna be bad immediately as I started the game. This is what I saw. <laughs> oh my. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a frame rate. And I know what you're thinking, turn the CPU cycles up, turn the memory up in DOSBox. No, I did all that. This is after that. This is how bad the game runs. Here's what it looked like to begin with. <laughs> oh yeah. This game runs like deep fried farts. Looks like saving up all that money for that voodoo card didn't do shit. I know the jokes write themselves, but here it goes anyway. Yep, this is a Bethesda game, all right. It's hard to believe this is a year after Wolfenstein and Wolfenstein actually runs better than this. Granted, it is rendering ceilings and floors, something that Wolfenstein could never do. What if we go in the settings and turn those off? Also notice I have graphic detail at minimum. Yay, now it runs like ass and looks like ass. Let's fucking go. This is with all of the graphics turned down and it's still juddering and popping and spitting. What makes it even worse is you turn slow as molasses. It has that old first person tank controls thing going on, which in Doom and Duke Nukem and blood and everything else, it's actually perfectly fine. It's not the best thing in the world, but you can live with it. On this with the choppy frame rate and the slow turning, it's just hell. 
You know what? I actually got so fed up with this frame rate, I started looking for ways to fix it. Thinking maybe it's DOSBox, maybe it's my settings. But then I read on forums from people that actually had the game back in the day and played it on real DOS machines. No, it really is this bad. I even downloaded a special version of this game on a website where somebody had already configured DOSBox with the absolute best settings for this game to make it run at its absolute best. And well, it looks like this. Well, the graphics are maxed out and it's going a little faster but it's still janky as fuck and yeah i know i'm making a big deal out of this yes i am because look what came out on the same month of the same year look what came out last year and would you believe that bethesda had the balls to say that this game inspired doom in pc zone magazine february of 1996 on a review of terminator future shock 1993 bethesda releases terminator rampage a first person perspective shoot em up which Bethesda claims was influential in the development of Doom. Apparently, id showed a lot of interest in the production of this particular game at Bethesda stands and various trade shows. But remember, that's Bethesda claims. Apparently. There is no way id Software looked at this game and said, yeah, this is the future. If you want to compare the two, here's something. I bet this game runs worse than SNES Doom. Let's have a look. Yeah, totally, SNES Doom runs better. Okay, I'll shut up about this because we've got lots more to cover. For one thing, look at this mini-map. Look at these rooms and look at these hallways and tell me there's any rhyme or reason to any of this shit. You know, normally when a game dev puts a room and a map, there's a reason to go in there, or there's some items to get, or something to look at, something interesting. Most of these rooms have nothing in them. Maybe some props. You like props? Well, this one had an enemy in it. Oh, now let me talk about these sons of bitches. They call this guy the Seeker because he won't get to get what he's after till the day he dies. This little round bitch's whole thing is it comes up to you and self-destructs. It barely makes any noise, too, so you you may go into a room, not realize it's there, and then something just explodes behind you. That happened so many times in this game, I just finally got used to it. Because it doesn't take that much of your health away anyway. They're more of an annoying nuisance than anything else. There's also the skimmer. You just saw the skimmer. For real though, the skimmer shoots at you, but it only takes like two hits to kill, so it's like, whatever. The game only really gets interesting when they start hitting you with the infiltrators. And if you'll remember, an infiltrator is a terminator with skin. It breathes, it sweats, it bleeds. It's the weakest terminator in the game, but it's still a threat because it has an Uzi 9mm. Even when you get the Uzi 9mm and later the M16, they still take a good few hits to kill. And you have to keep shooting them once they're laying down, or else they'll get back up, or at least I've been told that. So you have to keep shooting them until they explode. Sometimes the game gets very Bethesda, like this one seeker here doesn't see me. He's like stuck behind this little pillar, and the dynamic music isn't going off saying that he's there. I know it looks like he's in front of the pillar, but he's actually behind it according to the game. And of course, if I walk beside him, he blows up. There's the dynamic music. Where were you? What was I talking about earlier? The map? Oh God, the maps are insane. I mean, look at this. Who designs an office building like this? It's like MC Escher made this damn map. I know you can't tell it from the mini map, but this map goes on and on forever and they all do. The only consistent thing about them is they're all in a 100 by 100 square. So yeah, it's literally one of those mazes that you had in your coloring book. D do kids not have those anymore? God, I'm old. They at least gave you a longitude and latitude thing to give you at least some idea of where you're at. And that's what my guide on game facts has been using to help me figure out where the hell I'm supposed to go. Trust me, if you don't have a guide, you're going to wander down all these hallways wondering where the hell you're supposed to go, going in every single room trying to find those damn weapon pieces. All in all, it's not a very Brady Christmas. The first time I died in this game was really weird because there was some kind of glitch where I, I kept shooting at this infiltrator, but he wasn't dying. It's like my hits weren't being detected. Then suddenly he starts moving again and then I get my ass kicked. And apparently since I fucked up, Judgment Day happened. Ah!
<laughs> let's hear that again. You know what? I'm not even mad. That's a good game over. All right, let's get back at it. Let's continue. I didn't save. There's no checkpoints. There's no continues. Ooh, this game good. Yes, I had to play this game all over again to get back where I was at. And I've got nobody to blame but myself. I should have checked to see if you have to manually save. This is one of those games that if you don't save yourself, you're starting back over all the way at the beginning. That's also why my ammo count is different in some of these playthroughs you're seeing. I played this on the floppy disk version, and then I played another time on the CD-ROM version, which gave me some more ammo to play with. And I'm glad it did too, because originally, this game gave you virtually no ammo to use. Somebody did the hard math and found out that there is literally not enough ammo on the first level to kill all the enemies on the level. So you actually need to run past some enemies if you want to survive. But on the CD-ROM version of the game, it pretty much was fine. You get tons of ammo. I got a lot further in my second playthrough. In fact, I got an AK, which made the game a lot easier. In the game, you get a pistol, an Uzi, a shotgun, an M16, and an AK. And when you piece that plasma rifle together, you get that one too, but I never got that one. I never got that far. That's right, I did not finish this game, and I don't plan to, ever. The furthest I got was level 7. Which, by the way, is a weird level because you have to go back to level 6 and go get a key card, and then bring it back to level 7. Actually, you know what, let me explain this. At the end of level 6, you pick up a key card, and it's the key card to open up the exit to level 6 to go to level 7. What the game doesn't tell you is level 7 is also locked at the exit, but the key card for level 7 is not on level 7's map. You have to go back to level 6, pick up the key card from before, which has respawned, and then go back to level 7 with the level 6 key card. It makes no sense. That's like you when you put a password on your computer and then write down what the password is so you'll remember it, but write it down in Notepad EXE on your computer. You still need to get into your computer to find out what the password is. You know what? I am literally out of stuff to talk about with this game. It's just the same old shit over and over. Long labyrinthy hallways, uninteresting enemies, super chuggy frame rate, and not a fucking clue where you're supposed to go unless you have a guide. So how about I tell y'all about the second time that I died in this game. I went down this teeny tiny little hallway in this little confined space. I open a door and two infiltrators gangbang me at the same time. And guess who forgot to fucking save again? Yep, so I'll have to play this game all the way through all over again. I'd be better off having a hyper dick shoved all the way through my body. So let's look at the hit list. Who's responsible for this abomination? Now, Todd wasn't in Bethesda yet. He wouldn't come along till 94. C.S. Weaver, that's Christopher Weaver. He's the founder of Bethesda. V.J. Lakshman is the designer. He went on to do Elder Scrolls Arena and Daggerfall. I don't know who Gilbert Guns is, but that's an awesome name. Gilbert Guns. Almost as good as Brian Toomer. And that is Terminator Rampage. This serves as proof that it's not Todd's fault that Bethesda games run like shit and are super janky. They've always been like this. And even though I hated playing through this game again, I'm glad I got to share my pain with all the rest of you that I felt when I first tried this game when I was a younger guy. This is actually the furthest I've ever gotten in it and the furthest I will ever get because I am never playing this game again. Now it's all not gloom and doom for Terminator games because in 2019 we got Terminator Resistance which was an FPS game as well and it was actually a very decent game. Definitely the best Terminator game I've ever played at least. Lots of big fun worlds with cool stuff to do, plasma guns you can upgrade, a crafting system. It's pretty ambitious and pretty decent overall. So if you're gonna check out a Terminator game, go check that one out. It's actually really cool. But for God's sake, don't waste your time with Terminator Rampage. It'll make you go on one. And that's my review. Big Fat Zero. Well, that's gonna do me for now, kiddos. If you like this video, you know what to do. You don't need me to tell you. If you liked it enough, you can become a patron. I have $1 tiers and $5 tiers. For $5, you get early access and a Discord server. Now, if you excuse me, I'm gonna go in VR chat and bite people's heads off with my huge teeth.